Good morning and welcome to 168. I'm so happy to see you all here the fourth week of Advent, this week of love. Thank you guys for coming. Let's affirm the presence of the Holy Spirit and thank God for always surrounding us and being with us. Um, Pray with me. Father God, thank you so much for this time, for this season, with all of the beauty and complexity that you encompass and hold it all. Uh, expand our hearts and our spirits to feel and sense and see you. Um, Enliven us to share your love with those around us and to receive it uh, to a greater degree. Thank you for this morning that we get to be together. Thank you for those that are worshiping and joining with us online. Um, Thank you that your Holy Spirit knits us together regardless of distance or time or circumstance. In your name, amen. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good to see everybody here. Uh, Good to see you all online. Go ahead and check in and say hello if you're online. And if you're here, go ahead and stand and welcome each other. Uh, If you don't know the person next to you, just say, my name is. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here online if you're here. It's great to be here. We have new friends joining us, familiar friends joining us, students back from school and college. And as we, uh, as Amber said, as we experience God's presence uh, joining us and, and actually already being here, and we're just trying to get in tune with what the Spirit is doing. We focus on love, and so let's just uh, lift up this old classic song, I Could Sing of Your Love Forever. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my hands. For I will always sing of when your love came down. I can sing of your love forever. 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 Let's pick it up. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my hands. For I will always sing of when your love came down. I can sing of your love forever. I can sing of your sing 
of your love forever. I can sing of your love forever. I can sing of your love forever. You are holy, great and mighty, the moon and the stars declare who you are. I'm so unworthy, but still you love me forever. My heart will sing of how great you are. It's falling from the clouds, strange and loud the sound. I hear it in the thunder and the rain. skies, like cannons in the night, music of the universe plays, we're singing, you are holy, great and mighty, the moon and the stars declare who you are, I'm so this day in this moment just opening our hearts to your heart for us we thank you for your presence that is with us wherever we are in every space thank you for meeting us always coming to us and lifting our souls and reminding us of your great love that gives us something to sing about something to dance about something to share lord come holy spirit and continue to Bless us during this time that we might experience the depth of your love. Come, Holy Spirit, we thank you. In your holy and precious name we pray, amen. Well, indeed, want to say welcome to all of you, um, those joining us online, those here in person. A special word of welcome if you're a guest worshiping with us for the first time. We are 168. And that name reflects our desire to live out the way of Jesus uh, each and every day of the week and to be a community that does that together. And that's what we're exploring. That's what we're seeking to grow into. And, and that's our, our heart and our passion. So welcome. Want to just share a couple things going on in the life of our church. 
And I uh, want to let you know we have these beautiful banners up here. We're so grateful. The most recent for this week is the Love Banner. And Riley Watterson and Kasena Eve Jenkins made this banner. So I uh, want to thank them for that. I uh, want to let you know one thing, just pointing ahead to January. Uh, we really want to be in God's Word together. We believe that God's Word is alive. And one of the opportunities for that is... Uh, um, going to be happening in January, starting on January 10th. Our very own Ann Hong is going to be leading a four-week Bible study in the book of Ruth. So we just want you to be aware of that, that that will be starting on January 10th, and we're looking forward to that. And um, want to just, the last thing I want to mention is Christmas Eve. And so for Christmas Eve, we have two ways that you can worship with us. And for both of these options, they will be online or in person. And the first will be at 3 p.m. here in the Fellowship Hall. So originally this was going to be outside, 50% chance of rain. Yes, so our outdoor nativity experience will now be a Fellowship Hall nativity experience, which uh, the stable is already here, and so we don't have to move the stable. So the, <laughs> the, we're coming to the stable rather than sending the stable out into the streets. Uh, but we're going to be gathering here at 3 p.m., and this is really designed for children in mind. Um, and we're going to walk through the Christmas story with the kids in costume. We're going to have some characters give monologues, and we're going to sing together. Um, we're also going to have some other kids' activities. And we are putting together stockings for that service at 3 p.m. And so I know uh, Amber mentioned this last week. But uh, for those who are able to stick around after worship, um, we're going to be stuffing those stalkers. So we're going to, stockings, stuffing the stalkers. Hmm. It made sense in my mind. So if you're able to join us after worship, we will be assembling these stockings that we plan to give out. So that's the 3 p.m. service. And at 8 p.m., we are having a, a candlelight Christmas Eve celebration in our sanctuary. And the chancel choir will be singing, and we'll be lighting the Christmas candles as we sing Silent Night, and so a more traditional service. So we'd love to have you join us at 3 o'clock or at 8 o'clock as we celebrate together uh, the birth of Christ. So at this point, I want to invite uh, Riley to come and to read today's scripture. Thank you. It's actually in my announcements. It's right here. <laughs> Next week, our worship service is online only. So that's really helpful to know because if you show up here next Sunday, <laughs> no one else will be here. Okay. So next week, we are, uh, you can worship at home in your pajamas, all right? So it's, uh, we've got Christmas Eve on Friday night, and our California Pacific Conference, our conference has put together a worship service, um, and our bishop will be speaking. And so next Sunday is online only. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Good morning. Today's scripture. I'm gonna, this is too tall. Okay. There we go. Today's scripture comes from both Luke chapter two and Philippians chapter two. From Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the all <clears throat> that all those in the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quinerus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judah, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, it came time for her to deliver, said child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son wrapped in wrapped in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. From Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was from, he was the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but, it, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born into human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him a name that above all names, so that when the name of Jesus is spoken, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory to God our Father. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Riley. And again, great to be worshiping together. Hope you've had a good Advent uh, December so far. And um, can you go ahead and, and turn to somebody and just say, what have you most enjoyed about this Advent season or this December so far? Go ahead and just talk to somebody if you're online. Uh, just really quick, what have you enjoyed this Advent so far? Doesn't all have to be spiritual. <laughs> yeah. I mean, God is in the midst of all things. Uh, we, as, at a church, as a church, had a, a wonderful experience yesterday that's not necessarily spiritual, but um, one of our church members does play in the NFL, and we had a little watch party last night, and he got an interception yesterday. So that was great. That was amazing. And uh, mom is with us today because the game was yesterday. Uh, so congratulations, Sandra. And the best part is that he was healthy at the end of the game. That's the best part. We continue to pray for safety for all these players. Um, you know, just uh, in the Christmas season, I just want to say thank you to those who've given us Christmas gifts. Um, it's, it's very overwhelming at times and just so thoughtful and very tasty at times, too. <laughs> So I want to say thank you. Um, I'm actually wearing one of the, my Christmas gifts today. Uh, as I mentioned, somebody gave me socks. Yes, it's socks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, and I'm going to show you. Can you see? It's a cross. Oh, I shouldn't do that. I almost didn't make it back. But uh, the socks at the bottom say, with God, all things are possible. And actually, the giver of the gift is right here, Cindy. So thank you for my socks. Oh, that's okay. You can bring it next year. That's it's fine. <laughs> she said, I'm sorry I didn't bring you pastrami sandwiches. No, that's fine. No, no, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, well, you know, in many ways, we've had wonderful times and uh, truly meaningful times. Uh, last week, we went and sang to seniors in, their, in the home there. And again, can I just be honest? I was looking forward to it, but not that much. Okay? I was looking forward to seeing our members and uh, singing because I, it's one of those things. You always know it's always a blessing when, when you go. I was tired, though. This was, you know? But, man, when, as we walked out of there after it was all done, I literally could have played a basketball game. I was so filled with joy. They were so filled with joy to be able to sing simple songs that mean so much to people. Tears, smiles, you could see them mouthing the words. And there was one sweet lady that after every song we sang, she said, yay! <laughs> I mean, that is great. I mean, you know, such a blessing. Well, on this Christmas Sunday, we focus on love today. And um, I'm not sure you've been reading along in the scripture guide that we put together, but uh, this week I was reading through all the scriptures, and this thought came through my mind as I read the different scriptures, that we worship a God that comes to us. We worship a God that comes to us and doesn't just wait for us to come to him. See, the first Christmas, we celebrate that God came to us. We don't celebrate the fact that we made it to God. That's not what we celebrate on Christmas. And we celebrate that this God not only came to us, but God also came not in his glorious majesty and all his royalty, but he came to us where we are, as we are. It's so profound. If 
you uh, read the title of our scripture reading section, it says, the birth of Christ on this fourth week, the birth of Christ, incarnation and nativity. And that word incarnation really spoke to me and I just started reflecting on it. And, and Philippians 2 is actually the passage that's read today, but um, it explains kind of what was happening during that first Christmas. It explains the incarnation, that there was this divine being that emptied himself, as Philippians 12, 2, 2 says, emptied himself, made himself in the form of a slave, and came to us in human flesh. See, a lot of times we don't realize the significance of what God did, divinity coming in flesh, in human form. That's a huge jump, you know? And, and then it, the Philippians 2 goes on to say, and then he became obedient, he humbled himself, became obedient, even obedient to death on the cross. And that's more of the Easter story, right? But as I think about the first Christmas and I think about God standing up in heaven, I almost think things God could have said. I, I was thinking, what could have God could have said? And he said, they, he could have said, I'm sure they'll be okay. <laughs> Right? Or it's their fault. They're so selfish and so self-absorbed. How many of us get turned off by selfish, self-absorbed people? Oh, don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Uh, here's one that really gets to me. It smells down there. I just don't like being around things that smell, you know? Um, they probably won't even understand they probably won't even appreciate what I do. But things that God probably said, I have to do something. It's not that far. Yes, it's their fault, but I can help. And I can actually save them. They can become more selfless. They can become somebody who lives for something, a purpose beyond themselves. Yes, they smell, but they're mine, and I can't wait to be with them. They'll understand one day. They'll appreciate it one day. And then he came. Jesus came to us. Jesus emptied himself and came to us in human form. And the question is always, why? Why did, why did he do this? And the simplest answer is love, because he loved us. And love causes us to do the craziest things, right? I mean, love for golf, that's not a good analogy. That's not even in my notes. <laughs> But you talk to a golfer, and you say, hey, what time do you want to play? Uh, how about a 6 o'clock tea time? And they're like, okay, fine. Literally, look at their eyes. Okay. Like real golfers, golfers you tell this same person anything else at 6 o'clock in the morning, they're like, oh, it, it's really early. You know? I mean, love causes us to do the craziest thing. Turn to somebody and tell, talk about one thing you've done or something you've seen somebody do that's kind of crazy beyond that simply because of love. Because of love, you did this, or because of love, you saw them do this. Easy to think about what moms do for kids. But anyway, just a pointer there. Um, go ahead and talk about something you've done or seen somebody do out of just love. And those of you online, you can chime in or just think about it. I do hope those of you at home have maybe have someone to talk to where you are. It's so beautiful to see people just 
talking about this together. All right, well, turn to that same person and say thank you for sharing. Yeah. All right. I mean, the reality is love does whatever it can, right? Love, love doesn't think about the cost a lot of times. Love just wants to draw close and wants to help however and whatever way we can, you know. Love moves. Amen? When we love, we move. I've never seen a woman run faster than when her child fell about 50 yards away and she literally kicked off her heels and was down the alley. I was like, wow. Love moves. Love initiates. And as we remember on Christmas, love incarnates. Incarnation means to make flesh. That's their literal translation. Love incarnates, makes flesh, makes reality the things that we hope for. Jesus made flesh God's divine presence. Jesus made flesh God's divine love. Jesus made flesh, made a reality. All those beautiful words, all the good words, if you will, all the hopes. Jesus made flesh. All our hopes for true love and eternal life. And when I say eternal life, the kind of life that is just of the heavens, even here and now and in eternity. Jesus made flesh these things because love incarnates. Now, some of you know that I've been uh, hanging out um, with my neighbors a little bit. And actually, this neighbor came to one of our picnics uh, across the street. And uh, he's, he's Muslim. And I've just been trying to hang out with him a little bit, get to know him. And Pastor Tim gave this message last week about joy and sharing joy. And I was like, ah, who can you share joy with? And, I, and this neighbor came to my heart and mind. And so I started praying for him. And then just reached out and saw if he wanted to hang out this week. So anyway, we ended up hanging out yesterday because he had time yesterday. And uh, I didn't know what we were going to do, you know. But we ended up playing foosball. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> I'm sitting there playing foosball with this guy. And it's so funny because he's so competitive. <laughs> and I'm not that competitive. <laughs> so competitive it's it's sad you know i played basketball with my sons yesterday and it was game point and i literally almost took my son's head off because he was about to score the winning point i feel so bad still today i'm sorry god i'm sorry to that son but uh and it's, it was so bad that one of the younger sons is like dad <laughs> So anyway, me and this guy are playing foosball, and we're just having a good time, and, and, um, and I was like, just for a joke, I was kind of praying, I was like, come on, God, show him who the real God is, you know? But anyway, we had a good time, and, uh, and we started walking, and uh, we just started asking questions, and I started asking a lot of questions about his faith, because you could say Muslim, but there's so many different perspectives and the kind of faith that he carries. So I'm trying to figure out that out, the things he can eat, the things he can't eat, because I like literally live right next to him and I'm barbecuing all the time and I'm wondering, is this smell bothering them? Because <laughs> I'm like, should I not barbecue pork? Like, I mean, all these, so anyway, I'm asking these questions and, but he asked me questions too. And we started talking and he asked me very philosophical, deep questions as well. And as we were walking, it was just such a wonderful conversation of honest questions. And then we were talking about Jesus and resurrection. And he's like, is that what you celebrate at Christmas time? And then I said, no, actually, that's Easter. And then I started explaining Christmas a little bit. When's the last time you, exp you uh, shared about Christmas to somebody who's never heard the story of Christmas? It's fascinating because you realize the power. 
oh my gosh, this God, you realize everything he went through just to come to us. Why? All these things come alive when you ex try to explain it to somebody for the first time. And I pray that during this Christmas season that we'll remember again the significance of what God has done for us. That God comes to us, that's so significant because so many other religions, we have to do something to get to God. God comes to us in the form of a baby. It's just so powerful. And the message that I would love and I'm praying that we hear today, is that God is still here for us. A lot of times we do this Christmas celebration and we remember what Jesus did for us over 2,000 years ago, and we forget that this same God is still, has the same heart still today for you and for the person next to you for us. He still wants to incarnate to every one of us this Christmas, amen? He still wants to come to us and reach us in a way that can touch the depths of our soul like a baby can touch the depths of our soul. Reach out to our core and remind us, I'm for you. I am for you. I am with you. And I pray that you hear that. And I pray that we will also take the opportunities to share this message, to incarnate this message, if you will, to others during this Christmas season as well. Sometimes the picture that people have of God out there, or if, if we're not very versed in Scripture and understand this God, it's a picture of God that stands at a distance and watches us from afar and judges us and waits for us to be good enough to come to him. Do, you, do we realize that sometimes that's people's perspective of God? But God comes to us. And we have the opportunity to share that good news with people. I pray that you won't miss opportunities this Advent season or even into 2022. See, Philippians 2 starts with these words. Let the same mind be in you. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who emptied himself and all of these things. Paul is saying, let the same mind be in you. And see, if we truly understand God's love for us, we'll be compelled to go out and share that love with other people, right? Because love incarnates. That's what love does. And, and I was reading this stuff on incarnation, and I was telling Pastor Tim, I was like, yeah, there's some people that are like, we don't like that word because only God can incarnate divinity into flesh. True. So let me be clear. We are not divinity, <laughs> and we cannot bring the divine to other people, but we can be jars of clay that carry the treasure of God's eternal presence and love to other people. And we can be mangers that, that hold the eternal one, and bring the eternal one to others. Um, when I was in seminary uh, uh, in Kentucky, I was th just thinking about this because it just feels like a lifetime ago. <laughs> I was like 23, 24. It feels like a lifetime ago. And I'm this like little Asian guy. I was still 6'2", but anyway, I was skinny. And Asian guy living in Kentucky, and, and we decided to go hang out on the streets of Lexington, downtown Lexington, because there were a lot of homeless there. And we would go every Friday night. That's how we would spend our Friday nights. And we would just go sit, hang out where they're hanging out. I would bring my guitar, and we just got to know people. And we would just hang out, and I would sing probably the same songs every Friday, you know? But they just hung around, and I got to know these people, and it was so powerful. 
to just be with individuals and feel a warmth that comes over us because it was cold in the streets of Lexington, you know? But there's this warmth that com comes over us when we're together and they know why we're there. We're these young seminary <laughs> students, but we're there. And then this one time, and we had gotten to know these guys, this one guy who was uh, an African-American brother, he said, hey guys, you guys have enough to just put me up one night at a hotel? And we weren't that, we didn't have a lot of funds, but we were like, yeah, I think we could do that. So me and this other guy, we pitched in and um, we paid for his hotel, but we went with him. And I'm not, it's kind of fuzzy over 25 years ago now, but I don't know how, but we all ended up in the same hotel room. <laughs> and we're just hanging out in the hotel room, you know? And I'm thinking about this, I'm like, this is a little crazy and not safe, you know? But, and it's like, I wouldn't recommend my sons to do this, but this is where I was, you know? It was like, and we're hanging out, and he's like, hey, Ken, can you sing a couple songs, man? I was like, yeah, sure. So I just sang some songs quietly, because it's late in, in the hotel room. And he literally just lied down in the bed, put the covers over him, he had this huge smile on his face. And then he fell asleep. He fell asleep with that smile, and I just will never forget it. The kind of peace that overcame his soul. Why? Because we just took a little time. Because we just went there. He would have never come to a church service or to seminary to meet us, right? But here's the thing about that story that's hard. As I get older and more comfortable, that kind of stuff gets harder to do. Anybody with me on that? Can we think about times when we used to do things like that? And I know that certain things were not safe in that whole story, wisdom, but for me, there's more of a heart issue there. I'm like, man, I used to be willing to just do whatever. <laughs> there's a heart issue there. But the good news is that God is so gracious and he continues to nudge me. He continues to nudge my heart. And it's almost like, do you want to be just a has-been? <laughs> or do you want to live the faith now? Do you want to be a follower of Jesus as a 50-something-year-old also? Love incarnates. That's what love does. Love enters someone else's world. That's what love does. Love meets the person where they are instead of waiting for them to come to where we are. Love enters their world, their space, and even their pace. That's something I'm learning. Love leaves our preferences for their preferences. And when we incarnate, we lose our power. There's no sugarcoating this stuff. When we incarnate, we lose our power, we lose our status, we lose our comfort, we lose things that we're familiar with, but we do it because someone might experience the eternal love of Jesus also. Love incarnates. And I'm talking personally, but even as a church, I'm thinking the big C church, one of the shifts that I think we need to make as a church and even our church is a shift from attractional ministry to incarnational ministry, as they say. Attractional ministry is you prepare a ministry and wait for people to come. Food analogy, you prepare the meal and wait for people to come eat. Incarnational ministry, you prepare the meal and then you figure out how to get it to the people. And you don't just sit there and say, well, they didn't come, so let's just eat it ourselves. 
you know? We prepare the meal and we figure out how to get it out to the people who are hungry. See, in churches all across the United States, we're not the only one. There are church members, there are board members sitting around tables asking this question, why aren't people coming to church anymore? And I picture Jesus at that table. And I don't think he's asking the same question. I don't think Jesus is at the table saying, yeah, why don't they come in anymore? What's wrong with them? I really think Jesus is at the table looking at the t people at the table wondering, why aren't they going out? What would it look like for the church to be more incarnational? Like, what would it be, look like for our church, 168, to take what we have and bring it to people who are not here, in our neighborhoods, in Tustin, in our workplaces, in our schools, I mean, can you picture specific ways? Can we invite this Holy Spirit to give us clarity on specific ways? Because I think if we ask, the Holy Spirit will answer. <laughs> I think the Spirit will give us ways. I hear, here's a question I wrote down between services. What if church is not something you go to, but something you bring to people? <laughs> Have you had fellowship not at church sometime? And it's like, oh, we have in church right now. <laughs> what if church wasn't something you go to, but something you brought to, to people? What is it's something we bring? So again, same question as last week. Who? Who might God be calling you to incarnate to? this advent or in 2022. This same neighbor keeps coming to my heart and mind every time. And I don't know what God's gonna do with that, but I'll learn a lot. I know I'll learn a lot from this relationship with him. You know? And then how? How can you incarnate the love of God with them? To be with them? to love them and share God's love with them. Um, quick story, I, I, I wanna end this, but um, one of our church members, she has cerebral palsy, um, has a hard time talking clearly, but beautiful heart, clear mind, beautiful poet. But last week she, she asked me to come to her house on Monday and I said, sure, I can make it Monday. And she said, it's not for me, it's for my caregiver. I said, sure. I didn't ask a lot of questions, so I just showed up Monday. And, um, and she said, this is my caregiver. And I guess she told the caregiver that she was inviting her pastor, one of her pastors to come. So this caregiver sits down, I sit down, he said, thank you for being here. My best friend just died last week. And he just broke down, you know? And then he started telling me, like, I don't know where he is. You know, he went to church and these things, but I, I just don't know where he is. And I keep talking to him every day. Is that okay? I mean, he was just in pain. And it honestly, any one of us could have been there and just, just reassured him of Jesus' love for his friend because we know that he had a relationship with him as I talked to him, you know? So just, I just spoke assurance to him and said, it's not crazy to keep talking to your friend, you know? I still talk to my grandma, you know? And this peace that came over him, and then this, this church member wrote a poem for him after we prayed and said, 
Uh, Pastor Ken, can you read the poem I wrote? Because you won't be able to understand. So I read the poem, and here's what was so beautiful to me. It was a poem that understood his pain. It was a poem that was written because she has heard him cry and tell her what it was like on the day he found his best friend. It was a poem that recounted those days and the pain. She had identified with his heart during this whole, ser this whole event in a way that was so powerful and ended with hope. I just share that story because sometimes it's not us that we need to be the one that God just shows up and sometimes we can just connect people that could, could use a little ministry. We don't have to be special to bring God's love to people. We don't have to know everything. But if we go out of our comfort zone, meet people where they are, journey with people, love them as best as we can, and share with them the love of Jesus, more people will join us at the manger, as they say. And more people will worship our Lord and Savior and know that God is with them and for them. You know, as I reflect on today's message, to me, today's message is beautiful and challenging. It's good news and words I wish I didn't have to say or wish we didn't have to hear. It's a message that's comfort and hope and discomfort and uncertainty. But the first Christmas reminds us, this is God's love for us. That he loves us, that he's for us. And what breaks my heart as I was listening to Pastor Tim's message last week and praying about today's message is that so many people don't know that God is for them and that God is with them and loves them. So many people don't know. Do we realize the power that, we, that comes over us when, we, when we're able to say, God is for me. God is with me and loves me. That's something so powerful. That's something we could give to somebody. I'm going to end with this prayer that I just read at the end of a devotion, and it is my prayer um, on this Christmas Sunday. I pray for those who are lonely this Christmas season, for those who are suffering, that you would visit them as Emmanuel, God with them. God, hear this prayer. I pray that through their pain, that your presence would wash over them, covering them with your joy and peace. Please lead me by your Holy Spirit, that I may be available to bring love and joy to those around me who may be lost or struggling. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to invite Amber to come and and pray with us, for us. God, I am in awe of your choice to be real and tangible in a way that my human mind can conceptualize and find and touch. I'm always awed that you came as a baby in a disarming and fragile 
and completely dependent space to get to me, to model for me that I need you to be. I need to be completely dependent and full of wonder and joy and committed to the journey to grow. God, thank you for your realness that invites my own fragile realness to be seen. God, let me bring all that I have in, let us bring all that we have in our own ways, in our own skills, in what we're good at. Let us bring our whole selves to someone else and offer that in their moments of need. Pastor Ken said, we don't have to be special or like anybody else. We can just be who we are, sitting right next to somebody in who they are, and we can make space for you to show up and be all that you are and blow us all away. Thank you for holding the divine and the mysterious right next to the human fragile self. Thank you for being a both and God. Thank you for inviting all the complicated and coming right in with all of your beauty. I love that I get to see it in hindsight and that I get to see it in the right now before me. Thank you at Christmas time that you are a both and God. When we are in a both and space in a way that we have not been in ever. Thank you that you will hold us in the loss and in the joy. Thank you that you will hold us in our loneliness and in our fullness. And thank you that you will come and get right down in our space with us because there is no place else you would rather be. I love you so much. And you love us so much. I think you're great. In Jesus' name. We all stand and I'm going to sing two songs um, as we close out our service. The first one you might have heard before, <laughs> Oh Holy Night. Um, it's kind of funny that we're singing it, but it is one of my favorites. And honestly, the longer I live and the more I understand the depth of what Christ did when he came, this night that brought new birth and hope, um, it's just so powerful. These words are so powerful. I want to invite us to sing it um, and sing it out, but sing it as a prayer for people who might not know that this Christmas or Advent might be a divine uh, Advent. So let's sing it out. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error So felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Let's sing it out now. 
this Advent, Christmas, and even in this new year. Come, Holy Spirit. I want to invite us to uh, sing basically what has become our Advent song, God Turn It Around. So uh, again, let's end this service with prayer. I'm praying God come Turn this thing around God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around. Calling on the name, it changes everything. God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn.
God, turn it around. Think of a situation right now. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Come, Lord Jesus. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. He is up to something. He is up to something. God is doing something right now. Sing that again. He is up to something. He is up to something. God is doing something right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something. Right now, He is moving mountains, Come making Lord. a way for Come someone. He is doing something right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something. All of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And let us receive this blessing as we go forth to enjoy God's presence and share God's presence. Now may the amazing, life-giving love of the Abba Father, may the sacrificial heart of the Son, and the Holy Spirit who reminds the depths of our cores that God is for us, that God is with us, and the Holy Spirit who empowers us to be incarnational mangers, to bring the love of Jesus to people. Be with us both now and forever. Amen.